Say what you want about Eli Manning, but like Tom Brady and others, he's never put in that category, but his favorite receiver is the one that's open. He continually seems to do it, doesn't he? Yeah, the, the running joke for me is I'm going to take whoever's third on the wide receiver chart, depth chart for the Giants next year um, near the top of my draft because they always seem to emerge and be one of the top fantasy producers. I mean, Victor Cruz came out of nowhere, Hakeem Nicks the year before. And so even though they're banged up, he seems to be, be spreading the ball around and finding that open man. It's been an ongoing thing with both Hakeem Nicks and both Mario Manningham. When Victor Cruz emerging this year, it's kind of interesting because those were the two guys that emerged the last two years for the Giants. Yeah, they've both been pretty banged up. Nix has been fighting that hamstring injury. He looked okay this past Sunday. You know, he had four targets. He ended up with two catches, including a touchdown grab. So he had a pretty decent fantasy game. And then you had Manningham, who was a surprise addition to the injury report with a knee injury. But he went out there and was a top receiver for, for the Giants. You know, he, he really looks good. He's really become one of the favorite targets there. He had 10 targets, six catches, 77 yards, and a touchdown. So I really think these are two guys that we're going to see on the injury report going forward. But unless they start missing practices, I think you still have to put them in their lineup. On the fantasy impact, with Nick's banged up and Manning him out when they are out of course there's Victor Cruz but there's Jake Ballard too I mean again Manning uses all his receivers you know Ballard's come in and, and taken the role of that boss had the last couple of years and really just been a, a, a top red zone target really catching the ball well you know he doesn't get tons and tons of targets like some of the top elite tight ends but he does make the best of every opportunity he seems to pull down every ball that's thrown his way and he's definitely emerged as a decent tight end option uh, if you're struggling through injuries or you got a guy that's banged up or just in a poor matchup, you could do worse than Ballard, that's for sure. You mentioned Cam Newton. He got to come up in this past Sunday playing uh, Matt Hasselbeck and the Tennessee Titans in a game at home. Uh, they lost their fourth game at home. The Panthers are now 2-7. and seven. He did not score a touchdown, 30-3 to three the final. And on top of that, he's got a sore shoulder now. Yeah, he, he popped up on the injury report late last week with a sh sore shoulder. They're not saying it's anything serious. It's obvious that he that wasn't too worried about him because he ended up passing the ball 40 times. He ended up with 212 yards, but he was sacked five times. And you'll, it'll be interesting to see. I've heard the word pitch count used with Cam Newton. So they may be keeping a close eye on how many times he's actually throwing the ball. And if towards the end of the season, they still have the record that they do. And it doesn't look like, you know, they're going to be anywhere and really still rebuilding for the next couple of years. They'll likely limit his amount of, of throws, which could definitely hurt his fantasy value. Denver with another division win. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs. But when we talk about Denver running, it's Tim Tebow. He's the only one left. He got both Willis McGahee with a hamstring and no Sean Moreno with a knee sprain that both went out in this game. Yeah, and, and injuries to running backs in an offense where you're going to run the ball 55 times and only throw the ball eight times is definitely a bad thing. You know, McGahee it was coming back. He had that great performance after breaking his hand, but now he's he's got a little bit of a hamstring injury. And then Moreno came in and, and had a chance to maybe make a name for himself and maybe emerge, you know, put some distance between him and McGahee. But, but in typical Moreno fashion, he ended up injured again. He's got what they're calling a significant knee sprain. They fully anticipate him to be out this week against the Jets. They play on Thursday night, so it's definitely something that's going to be difficult for guys to get healthy quickly because they, they are working on that short week. You know, uh, the guy I'm looking at, if I've got either one of these guys, is, is Lance Ball. He carried the ball 30 times this past Sunday. He ended up with 96 yards. And like you said, this offense is geared towards the run. They're not going to let Tebow, Tebow throw the ball a lot, not run the risk of interceptions. It's definitely run-friendly. And if you've got, you know, a hole in your running back situation right now, I would definitely go after Lance Ball. Kansas City and Denver, another injury update. And we talk about Matt Castle, the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, he hurt his hand. Uh, he left the game, and he was not replaced by Shane Falco from the replacements, but it was close. Tyler Palco instead of Shane Falco, huh? <laughs> well, Palco came in and, and really, you know, was was in there for that final drive, and there were some questions on what is going on. I, I know some people have been really disappointed in Castle's performance anyway, but he left, left the game, um, didn't return, and then ended up leaving the locker room with his hand immobilized. He, had his, he was put in the cast, his, his middle finger and his... his index finger were, were casted and immobilized. You know, he really thinks that, that he's going to try to get back out there. They do have the benefit of an extra day of healing. They don't play till Monday night. But, but again, for a quarterback to have an injury to his hand where they're already immobilizing, it's got to be significant. you got to look at his reps through, through, through the week and, and how, many, how many passes he's able to attempt at practice. But if you've got Castle and you're starting him, you probably are in a bad quarterback situation anyway, and, and you have to consider at least picking up Palco just in case Castle can't go on a Monday night.